open this file. Timelines are all to do with pivot tables. So what we have here is we have uh, an analysis of spending. So we have a family spending and it's tech spending. So throughout the year, every time um, something is purchased, we record the details in the spreadsheet, what it was, when it was, uh, who it was purchased from, how much it was and who it was purchased for. I'm just going to create a quick pivot table. In fact, just before I create the pivot table, another great new feature they've added is recommended pivot tables. What it does is it analyzes your data and it actually comes up with some suggested pivot tables. You don't have to use these and um, you know you can use one of them as a as a starting point but it's it's a new feature recommended pivot tables but i'm going to create my own pivot table so insert pivot table i'm going to uh, accept that as the range where the uh, data is and i'm going to put it on an existing worksheet i'm going to put the pivot table over on this analysis sheet starting at A1. And what do I want to do? I want to drag in date into rows and drag in category into rows and drag in amount into values. So we have our pivot table. If I right click on one of these dates, I can select group and I might want to group by quarters. I might want to group, let's ungroup that. I might want to group by months. So this, this isn't new, this bit. Uh, this is just a, a feature of pivot tables to do with dates. So let me ungroup that, Ooh. ungroup. And I'll show you the new feature. In fact, I want to take date away from there. So what we now have is we just have a summary of how much was spent on each category of tech in our spending. Click into the pivot table and choose insert timeline. Now what it's done is it's detected that we have one field in the original data that has dates in it. So I tick that, click on OK. I get this timeline which I can move to wherever I want it and resize it as well. I've also got different styles for my timeline so I can have different color schemes. Let's go for this green one here. By default it's set to months so what it's done is it knows that the spending has happened between uh, January and December but I can change that. I can change that to quarters. I can change that as I say back to months. Change it to days and I've got this scroll bar which takes me through. and years. Obviously we've only got one year in our data so let's set it to months. What I can then do is click say on May, so I've just selected May and the data there in the pivot table is just showing me May. I can then extend that maybe May, June and July and it updates the pivot table. Let's have a look at our spending in the winter months. And then let's go and change it to days. So let's say we were only interested in the end of the year when it comes to Christmas. How much did we spend on tech around Christmas? So let's start with that and extend it to there. And it updates the pivot table. Now I know you could do that using pivot table filters. We could add in a filter of date. and we get this here. But I personally think doing it with the timeline is better because uh, once you've actually selected your criteria on here, um, it's not as visual. And I actually think, let me drag that away. I actually think doing it with this timeline is visual. Plus the fact you can have multiple timelines on um, the same, um, same page. 
So let's go to insert and timeline. So I can have a second timeline. So I could have one analysed by days, one analysed by quarters. So that is timeline, great new feature.